I'm raising money for my cousin Sheila. She is... They have given her until July and she has no money to fund for her funeral, so that's what I'm trying to raise money for. She's had cancer on and off for the past 10 years and she had a hysterectomy to remove it and then she went back and it had spread throughout her whole body. So now she's just biding her time. Um, I'm scheduling more items. I'm in the works with Applebee's and Ray Skillman and thank you for donating anything. Everything counts. It would mean the world to me. She can't afford anything. She's such a good-hearted person, and I'm just trying to do anything I can for her. Good afternoon, Warriors. I'm Nolan. And I'm Hannah, and this is your annual one-day broadcast edition of Warrior TV News. On today's broadcast, we learn how to manage multiple deadlines. Get a sneak peek of this weekend's AP Spring Conferences. Take a look at the new way our classes are being ran. Hear about the WCHS Choir Program's successful year. Meet the language arts student teachers. And see what's going on in the computer programming classes. All this and more on the one day broadcast edition of Warrior TV News. With AP tests on the horizon and I-STEP tests happening right now, students are juggling many projects, exams, and homework due dates. Kylie Glover and Jared Canary talk to students and staff to learn how to succeed in managing multiple deadlines. As the 2015-2016 school year comes to a close, many students are finding that they are being bogged down with multiple deadlines and projects. Warrior TV takes to the classrooms to find out just how these students manage their time. I don't manage my time very well. GI. Um, I manage my time by um, just allotting homework time um, every day after either practice or games. Um, I manage my time by usually after track I give myself like 45 minutes to like relax and stuff and then I start doing all my homework and stuff until I get it all done. I've got three upcoming projects due this Friday. Uh, our AP Biology project is due on Friday, um, the Life at 25 project is due next Friday, the AP Stats take home test is due next Thursday, and uh, AP test start at the beginning of May. After talking with some WCHS students just now learning to deal with time management, Warrior TV went to the staff to get their advice on how to deal with the stress. My advice for someone who's looking to manage their time or having issues managing their time is to think of time in a lateral context. Um, how can you maximize and multitask? How can you prioritize and compartmentalize so you're getting multiple things done at the same time? Advice that I would give to students about how to manage their time is that they need to look at a calendar and put the due date on there and look at other major events that they know they have coming up. One thing that students need to do when they're starting to feel overwhelmed is take a deep breath and look at the, at the project, estimate the time involved, and make a plan. If you have a plan, then you have something to stick to and to guide you. If you just say, oh, I'll get around to it, then you never, you never write it down, you never really seriously say, tonight I'm gonna to devote this time to this project, and then it spirals into, I'm not done and it's the deadline. Remember there's a bigger picture. Uh, remember that you're not gonna, at some point, you're not gonna be able to get everything done, and so you're gonna to have to, prioritize and you're going to have to uh, accept 
and cope and realize that something's not gonna get done and it's okay. And the idea that you're actually gonna be made a better person, you're gonna have better work ethic, you're gonna be more mature and more apt to thrive, succeed, etc. when you realize that that's how, that's the reality that awaits you. It's clear that WCHS students still have a lot to learn about meeting deadlines and allocating time for projects. If you're ever feeling stressed about converging deadlines, be sure to talk to one of your teachers as they will be able to give you guidance. From the main atrium in the K Hall, I'm Kylie, here with Jared, Warrior TV News. Part of WCHS's NIMSI grant, AP students are given the opportunity to hear from different presenters to review for their AP exams. Andrea Little and Jordan Wilson take us to the AP teachers, students, and guidance staff to get us ready for this weekend's AP Spring Conference. The changing of the seasons bring AP testing along with it. Warrior TV goes to the WCHS staff who are invested in the AP process to get a closer look at this Saturday's AP Student Conference and why it's so beneficial. AP Student Conferences are workshops that we have for AP students that help them prepare and get ready for the AP exams. We've had those for the last two years and we have found that students that go to the conferences, their chances of getting a qualifying score on the AP exam really go up if they attend these conferences. You get all kinds of extra help from other people teaching this, like for instance the math teachers, we have somebody coming from Carmel, Indiana, somebody from, that's a University of Nebraska professor, he's actually written his own textbook, so it's an extra opportunity to get some help from other people uh, to teach the same stuff they've been learning all year. And I think that our AP teachers do a great job and I think by going to these conferences, it just adds to what our teachers are already doing. And this upcoming conference is perfect timing because we're two weeks out from our first AP exam. Here you have, like I said, other people trying to explain this to you and hear their perspectives. And sometimes and that's, that's all it takes one. is just hearing somebody else say that in a slightly different way. Uh, the problems that they'll be looking at are straight from AP tests, so they get more exposure to the AP types of problems, which are not the same types of problems they see in the textbooks and the more preparation they have, the better off they'll be. Conference will be this Saturday, uh, April 23rd. Uh, starts at 8 o'clock in the morning and goes from 8 to 12.30, and it is right here at Whiteland Community High School. After talking to Mr. McMillan and Mr. Lukic, Warrior TV goes to the students to get their insight on how they plan to prepare for the AP conference this, this spring. I would say it was beneficial because, especially in calculus, sometimes people don't really understand the topics. So going to those sessions really helped. Uh, it was helpful. You get a lot of different views because uh, you uh, hear things from a different perspective and different teachers so grasp the subject a little bit better. Uh, you get to uh, hear from some of the best teachers in the state and from teachers that aren't your own. I plan to go to this one partially because it's required, but also because we do have Calculus BC sessions now at this student conference. So those will be really beneficial. It's, it's well structured for the most part uh, within like the periods and everything like that. Like you're not rushed whenever you're transitioning between the course three. And I would definitely make it later in the day. I really like all the different information we get from all the different speakers. I'll probably just work harder and focus more since the tests are coming up and want to pass. AP tests are approaching soon, Warriors, so don't forget to go to the AP Student Conference this Saturday, April 23rd at 8 a.m. right here at Whiteland Community High School. From outside the TP doors, I'm Andrea, here with Jordan, Warrior TV News. Hey, Danny. What? What are you even doing here? AP conference tomorrow, buddy. I don't want to be late. Oh, me neither. Scoot over. <laughs> Turn off the light. Don't forget, Warriors. AP conferences are this Saturday at 8 a.m.
Don't forget your fast pass. Art classes are a very popular option for students who want to express themselves creatively. Recently, the way projects are structured have been altered to allow students to open their minds just a little more. Danielle Munn, Emily Muse, and Ellie Eisen talked to current art students and teachers to paint us a picture of what changes are being made. With numerous art classes here at WCHS, Warrior TV dips into one specifically known as Sculpture 2. This unique class puts the student's creativity to the test through the concept of Artist of the Mind. Warrior TV brushes their way over to the students to learn more about it. <laughs> That's actually hard to describe. Art Habits of the Mind, it's um, basically anything you want it to be. It's more of what you visualize. Basically, it's just like different concepts put together so that you can like create your own unique piece of art. I like this idea because like in this class you can just be able to express yourself and use different medias and different pieces of like materials to create whatever you want. When you visualize something, you know, it's, it's, it's a little hard to bring it, you know, to life. It's fun to like come up with the ideas that you want to show. It kind of helps me relieve some of the stress of being a high schooler. The most unique thing I've done this year was the Nemo with like the three different pieces of glass. It's probably my favorite one that I've done. The most unique thing I've done this year is more of a bikini bottom project. I just look up certain art projects and then I just twist it off of that. I would recommend this class and because if you have different things that you enjoy, then you can just create it. It's, it's a fun class to take. <laughs> it's like taking everything you learned from Sculpture 1 and just broadening that like crazy. After getting insight about Sculpture 2 and what takes place within the class by WCHS students, Weird TV sketches up a few ideas with Mrs. Pope about artist habits of the mind. Artist Habits of the Mind is research that has been done over, over 30 years um, and what it does is it helps teach students how to participate in the art world um, more than just being told what to do. Uh, they learn to playfully um, try things, learn from their mistakes, develop skills based off of the different materials, um, learn to try to think outside the box and envision things that haven't existed before. It gives students autonomy, which means that they get to do what their free will is telling them to do. It gives uh, students a real good chance to try out their creativity in, in a world that is very standardized. Since it's a second semester class, that means we're in our third round of students. Um, it has been rather successful. It started out small, it's been growing. I think the word's getting out that kids get to do what they want to do. But I enjoy it because I get to see what the kids want to do, what they want to talk about, what they want to see happening. They're bubbling over with, with these ideas and, and enjoying what they're doing so much more than if I'm saying, hey, make this. The students of Sculpture 2 have spent countless hours expressing their imagination and personality through art in the classroom. If you are interested in this process in class, talk to your guidance counselor about adding this class to your upcoming schedule. From outside Mrs. Pope's room, I'm Danielle with Ellie and Emily, Warrior TV News. If you've ever walked towards the cafeteria during a class period, you may have heard the sounds of singing voices and instruments flowing out of the J-Hall. This year, the WCHS choir program has exceeded expectations and achieved success unlike any prior school year. Julian Stenger and Madison Scott take us behind the scenes to give us a look at what the WCHS choir programs are all about. The WCHS choir program has been hard at work in preparation for the various competitions that they participate in throughout the year. Warrior TV goes to the choir directors to understand what goes into the choir program and what successes they have achieved. We've had a lot of changes um, since last year. First of all, we have Mr. Conley now. So adding Mr. Conley has been awesome. He's done great work. Everybody's really enjoyed having him. One of the ways the program has changed since last year is uh, there's a lot of more uh, kids in the program. We have 299 kids uh, set to take choir next year. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, I know that the level has changed too. Uh, I know that Mr. Coulter and myself are really holding the kids to a uh, much higher level than in the past. And so uh, that's really making the groups better than they have been. We've 
had a really successful year for all of our choirs. Chorale, Women's Concert Choir, and Men's Choir just went to ISMA Organizational Contest this past weekend, and all three groups received Gold Division rating. We have a contest coming up for um, our Intermediate Mixed Concert Choir, the Cordeliers, this coming Saturday. Show choirs have both had amazing years. Expressions has grown by leaps and bounds. Next year, they've, they've grown so much this year that next year we're going to start competing with them. So they've had huge, huge success. Rhythm Masters has grown in numbers and ability. Um, this year, for the first time ever, they won a large mixed division. Shades of Blue won ISMA Vocal Jazz State. Um, state vocal contest and so we cannot be any prouder of the ensembles because they really have achieved a new a new level of success this year our job is really not to win things but we just want to do as well as we can at contests and so i think uh this year will be a springboard into that uh, with more gold ratings and, and things like that coming to each choir's way after talking to Mrs. Coulter and Mr. Conley about how successful the WCHS choir program has been this year, Warrior TV goes to the hardworking choir members themselves to get their insight on what went into achieving such high success. The work ethic in choir, it, it does take a lot of time because you have to go over all your songs and being in multiple choirs, it's definitely hard kind of juggling both at the same time. It takes a lot of work to be in show choir and it's you have to put in time out of school and work on your dances and work on your music and it's not just in class. You have to stick together, you have to have a good attitude all the time because sometimes it can be hard but you just you can't let yourself get down about it. Achieving all these great things in choir with all the people that I love has been really, really awesome. I've always loved choir and being able to achieve something at that level, it was, it was really great. WCHS is very proud of the ever so successful choir program and looks forward to seeing what they will accomplish in the future. Best of luck to the Coraliers as they compete at ISMA this weekend. From outside the choir room, I'm Madison with Julianne, Warrior TV News. It's been fun making history here at WCHS with my friends and choir. I don't know, it's been great. <laughs>
at least a couple of kids will say, oh, she helped me with this, or I actually learned something, um, regardless if that's educational or if I just help them with something they're interested in. Um, I actually decided to become a teacher when I went to high school here at Wendland Community High School. I had Mr. Harrison as an English teacher. Um, always loved English, um, writing and reading, so that was just kind of a given. Um, but Mr. Harrison really made English fun for me and also was just a phenomenal teacher. After talking to Ms. Hobbs and Ms. Napier, we go to staff and students to figure out their impact and experiences gained from having student teachers here at WCHS. Student teaching helps all of us become prepared um, to take on the career fully. And I think that not just having me as a mentor, but observing other teachers in their classrooms as well, teaching two different classes, the language lab as well as English 9, um, has been great because in high school you never really teach just one subject. This is my first time having a student teacher, and oddly enough, while student teachers wouldn't think so, I was a little bit nervous about having one because I wanted to be the best mentor that I could be. I've learned things yeah. from her because she's fresh out of school, you know, so she's got a lot of creative ideas, and I think it's been very beneficial for both of us. She's doing a wonderful job. She's, she's really good at what she does. She's going to be a fantastic educator. She's developed relationships with students, and um, I'm very, very proud of her. I mean, she's really good, and she, like, um, does new things and stuff, so it's really interesting to see how she does it. She impacted me by helping me with English, because English is not really my strong suit, but now it's easier now, since she was a teacher. I'm just going to leave remark because she's, she's very dedicated to her work, and she definitely works really hard as a student teacher, and I definitely expect her to see her either back here or at some other school and just doing awesomely as a teacher. I think. Like in reading and stuff, I don't understand the context or whatever. She'll come over there and she'll explain it to me one on one, help me out understand it better. What he said. We are glad to have Miss Hobbs and Miss Napier as our student teachers here at WCHS. Next time you see them, wish them good luck in the rest of their career. Outside the guidance office, I'm Sam here with Ryan, Warrior TV News. Say, I also want to say that. Um, She's been an absolute godsend for me this semester. Many students may not know that there are computer programming classes here at WCHS. Even fewer know what unique and exciting technology experiences really go on in those classes. Nick Bailey, Kaylee Seawright, and Spencer Johnson take us to Mr. Coons and his students to see what innovative processes really go on in the B-Hall. The computer programming classes are hard at work with one of their biggest projects of the year. Warrior TV sifted through the code and went to Mr. Koontz and his students to get the inside scoop of the AI interface project and everything that goes along with it. A chat bot is a computer program that will talk back to you. So you type something in and it will have a conversation with you. Uh, the chat bot works by uh, when you type in a statement, it's going to pick up on key words. Okay, just like in a conversation, if you're talking to me about sports, I'm going to respond to you about sports. So it's looking for keywords that you type in or say, and then it will respond based off of that. So we will use what you call string methods to locate that. So the purpose of the lesson is to learn how to use string methods. The computer that beat Ken Jennings in Jeopardy, and that was like, that's like very high AI, but that's what it did. It picked up on key words. From Alex Trebek saying them, it picked up on key words, went to its database, and gave a response based on that. Um, they had it refined to the point where it actually could answer the questions. Honestly, this is the first year I've done it, so um, anticipated right now is just learning the methods and, and understanding how they work. So we're going to really work that okay, in class um, before we actually throw them into the chat box. Yeah, the neat thing about it is you can kind of give its own personality. I don't have a very rigid, it has to say this when this. I have a few of those just for example purposes. Um, like if somebody says hi to it or hello or what's up, it's, it's got to respond, you know, in a, in a normal greeting or some sort of greeting. Other than that, they can kind of do their own thing. So. Although Mr. Coons' role as a teacher is an important part of the process, Worry TV talked to some student programmers about their individual experiences with their current project and the class as a whole. A chatbot is basically artificial intelligence that you can talk to it and it talks back to you depending on what you say. It looks for keywords. Some challenges are sometimes you don't always know exactly how to do something, so you kind of have to look around on the internet and try and figure out 
a solution to a problem. Probably recognizing which string methods to use is probably going to be the biggest challenge, trying to get all those keywords in there. However, but me and the dude next to me were both using it, and it seemed to have a completely different personality between us, as his was real really snarky, and mine was sort of cool and collected. So it was sort of like two different chatbots. Uh, being in this class has taught me to be creative, as in Kunzikstan. Uh, not necessarily go off of what the teacher says, just make your own program as best as you can. This class is important because it teaches kids about technology and kind of like how to code, and coding in this day and age is pretty important. Computer programming classes teach students 21st century skills that help them prepare for the ever-advancing culture. If you are interested in the computer program class or being a part of this project, talk to your guidance counselor or Mr. Coons. From outside the guidance office, I'm Kaylee, here with Nick, Warrior TV News. There isn't really a practical use, it's just for fun. You just, it's just someone to talk to when you don't have any friends, you know, like some people. <laughs> <laughs> And on behalf of all the students in Advanced Radio TV, we'd like to remind everyone watching that everything you've seen on this broadcast was planned, produced, and published all in the context of one school day. And that's all we have for you on this year's edition of the Warrior TV One Day Broadcast Project. Until next time, have a good one! Pizza! 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 Pizza!